Welcome to Akon Podcast. How you doing, brother? I can't wait for our conversation today. I'm Damn. excited. <laughs> I'm excited too. Um, what's up, Akon Podcast family? Today we have in the studio Nick Hutch, the CEO of Book Thinkers. Nick, dude, it's been a long time we haven't seen each other. Yeah, COVID's made it a little tough, but we we still talk. We do. We, I mean, we've yeah. been in contact. Um, Nick, let's um, jump on to, you, you, now since you graduated, you've become a big entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Like, tell me, how did you get into that? Well, actually, when I was at UNH, I took an, inter- well, I took a, an internship slash job during my, jun- during my freshman and sophomore year, something like that, where I was doing house painting. Oh, I, yeah. for free or? No, I was, I was charging people. I was doing house painting and uh, I had like 10 people working for me at one point. And so I really found that I loved being a business owner, but I needed to scale. And so I took another internship at a different job. Right. And when I started working there, one of my sales mentors gave me a couple books and I started to learn a lot faster than I was in school. I learned like, hey, I can learn so much by reading these books. People are condensing decades of information yeah. and lessons into <laughs> days. And once I started doing that, I read a book called Think and Grow Rich. And in Think and Grow Rich, he talks about this concept of mastermind groups where you meet up with your friends yeah. and you just talk business, like ideas. And so I was meeting up with Alec, you know Alec. Yep, and, yep. and so we started talking about books, like how can we create a business around books? Because I was posting books on my socials, yeah. like my personal Snapchat right, and right. Instagram and everything. Right. And everybody was asking me about books. And so I said, I love books. I'm going to start a business around books. And that's kind of how it all started. How many books have you read total since when you started this whole thing four years ago, right? Yeah, About- four or five years ago. I probably have read 300 something books now that's in the last crazy. five years. Yeah. It's cr- like how many, like, can you finish a book within a week? Oh, for sure. Easy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know what's so crazy about reading, and I love saying this, is that reading is like any other skill. Like if I was to go out on the golf course with a bunch of people that play golf, they're going to beat me at golfing, right? But reading is a skill. I've gotten more efficient at it. I know how to read more efficiently, what to look for. Right. And so when I pick up a book now, I read every word of every page, but I'm so much faster because I was slow on day one, but now I'm on book 400 or whatever. And right. Yeah. That's sick. So like, is there any other reason you wanted to start Book Thinkers or was it just because you, you had this, you know, like you had just fun reading and like love reading and getting people, just getting knowledge in general. Yeah. My, one of my favorite entrepreneurs, Evan Carmichael, he says that your purpose comes from your pain. And so although I had a lot of fun in college, I was bored. And I didn't have a lot of motivation. I skipped classes. Like, you want to talk about funny stories. Like, I was an RA, but I never even went to class. Like, <laughs> and so, you know, like, y- your purpose comes from your pain. Like, I didn't have a direction. I didn't have a mission. Right. And I was, oh, I was successful by, like, the normal definition. But I wasn't super fulfilled. And books helped me find my purpose. And I, I was insecure. Mm-hmm. And I was operating from a place where I was self-conscious and stuff. And then books helped me become so much more confident, so much more intelligent, so much more articulate. I was scared to talk to people. I had to take public speaking classes. I know. you. you know? I remember doing you doing some of that, yeah, some of that stuff. Yeah, so, so, so books just helped me get there. And that's why I wanted to do it. Right. So I was like, I'm aligned with this. Right. So like, there's probably like a lot of kids out there who feel insecure as well mm-hmm. um, in these same circumstances. Can you give any, you know put a light on some of those insecurities you had and like kind of tell us how reading books like helped you. Yeah, forward. sure. I mean, I, I came from a place where I had a lot of social anxiety and that's because you're insecure and you're scared of what other people think. Like if you have a fear of public speaking, it's because when you get up on stage, you care too much about what the audience thinks of you and that they're going to judge you and that things are going to go poorly. And so when I started to read some books, I remember the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. He said that you're, you need to embrace discomfort intentionally. And so I started, I said, okay, I'm scared of public speaking. I need to get a minor in public speaking. And so I did. I, I literally have a minor degree. <laughs> that's my minor at UNH Dude, is public speaking. That's good. Yeah. And so I took classes and I just started to have uncomfortable conversations with people and it helped me to care less and to become more confident and, and just like define my mission. And then, then you could just run with it. And so books, there's a book for every single topic, every single topic that you need help with in your life. Somebody's written a good book about it. Well, since you've read so many books, do you have any like special book that you, 
you would love to recommend to people to read all the time or that you yourself just you you've read it like multiple times yeah well you know what when uh <laughs> whenever people ask me that question now that i've read hundreds and hundreds of books i need to ask more follow-up questions know, because yeah, there's so many different areas to bring somebody but i'll tell you the first book i ever read was rich dad poor dad by robert Kiyosaki. which you which you said you sent me a copy of that right yeah, yeah. i did i did and i love i've give i've gifted that book to probably like 50 people because before I read that, I didn't know anything about money management or investing, and we're all forced to play the game of money, so you might as well be good at it. It's not about being materialistic. It's about putting yourself on a level playing field. And so if you grew up in a poor family, you're going to learn poor money habits. If you grew up in a middle-class family, you're going to grow up thinking that it's okay to take on a lot of debt and you know, be way above your means. And if you grow up in a rich family, you're going to be rich. And that's because money is taught in the home. It's not taught in school. And so getting a good degree doesn't mean anything if you don't educate yourself about money. That's a very yeah. good point. I'm glad so you brought that point that up. <laughs> let's, let's continue on that point, though. So a lot of people want to go to college. Mm -hmm. There is also a lot of people who do not like to go to college or don't want to go to college. But because of their family, they're forced to go to college because that's kind of like the the way to become successful in a sense. Do you think college is really the answer to success? I think for some people it can be, but for a lot of people it's not. Uh, for me, when I went to college, it was a good opportunity to be social. I met a lot of amazing people like you. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but like, I, I don't think that it helped me progress as far as what I want to do in my career. Like, when I read a good personal development book, I read about 30 years of somebody's lessons and their ups and downs and lefts and rights. And I learned so much more in a book than I did in an entire college class, which took months and it cost me a lot of money. And now I have debt. And so for me, I, I, I don't regret college because it happened and I loved it and I met so many amazing people, but I've learned so much more about business and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and about myself right. through books and experience and, and less about college. But if you're a doctor, go to school. No, I had to, right? Yeah. So like, just like you said to your point. Some people have to go to college. Like I had to go to college to get my degree. Otherwise, there's no way in hell I'm, I'm going to be practicing in yeah. the field. Um, and so that, that made sense. But like for a lot of people out there, even for like business students, I feel like they could go either way, yeah. go to college or not go to college. Because nowadays you have access to technology. You could do pretty much anything, right? Yeah, I mean, Harvard has made so many of their courses available for free online. For free, online. yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. It's crazy. And so why pay, why put yourself in hundreds of thousands of dollars if of you don't potential have to. debt and pay big interest on it if you don't have to? And so if you're a business student and you're listening and you're young and you're about to make that decision, then do what your gut says, especially the fact that you can always go back to school. It, you can take a couple of years and try it out for yourself mm -hmm. or pause while you're in school. Like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates – they went to, to school and then they took a leave of absence. They didn't quit or drop out. They said, I'm going to try this for a little while. And then they didn't go back because they made it. People think like drop out, but try it out, you know? Right. Give it yeah. a try and see what it does. Because again, just like you said earlier, um, having this connection, if I never went to UNH, I never exactly. would have met you. I never would have met like a lot of great people that I've met in my life. But um, although it was a challenge, right, you can't deny that. But it was also like um, something that it was a must per se.